Okay, so this is going to be our question number three. And for those of you that are uh, interested in taking the IB exam, this was actually a sample IB exam question. So you could expect to see something like this. So a ship leaves a port located at a point A on a bearing of 30 degrees, and it sails a distance of 20 kilometers to a point B, and there it changes direction to a bearing of 75 degrees. So then it sails 25 kilometers to reach a port located at a point C. So in part A, we want to find the distance between A and C. And in part B, we're going to find the bearing of the point C with respect to A. And I'm understanding part B to mean if you were at, 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 at point C, which bearing would you need to go on to get back to point A? That's how I'm understanding that question. So that's how I'm going to approach it. I don't think they mean it the other way around, but they could. But if we can do one, we can do the other. So again, oftentimes you see these types of questions and you use the law of sines and the law of cosines. I have the, a couple of those laws written down just to jog your memory about what they mean. So there they are generically. I'm not gonna you know, do a whole long discussion on the law of sines and the law of cosines right now. I do have entire videos dedicated to them though. So if you need to get a refresher on those, there's certainly out there. Okay, so there's gonna be our point A. Try to get a straight line here. So it says we're on a bearing of 30 degrees. So let's pretend that this is our bearing of 30 degrees. And we travel a distance of, what was it, 20 kilometers at first? <clears throat> and then we land at a point B and then we change bearings. So notice if we did, so here's due north again. Notice if we went on a bearing of 90 degrees, we would be at a right angle, but we're only going 70 degrees, so not, not quite that far. So we go a little further there, we went 25 kilometers. So there's 25 kilometers. And now we're gonna be at a point C. Okay, so in our first question, we wanna find that distance from A to C. So I'm gonna label this as D for distance. So if I knew this angle, I would be able to um, start using the law, the law of sines here. So let's set this part up, or excuse me, um, we're gonna use the law of cosines. I said the law of sines first. So if we knew this angle, let me call it angle capital D, we would say that D squared so the law of cosine says we take the other two sides and square them. So the other two sides were a length of 20 kilometers and 25 kilometers, and we add those together. And then we subtract away two times those, the product of those lengths. And then we take cosine of the angle uh, opposite from the, from the side D. So we would take cosine of the angle D. So if we can figure out what that angle is, then we'll be in luck. We'll just be able to plug this into a calculator and we'll be off and running. So I'm gonna draw, this is where my diagram is gonna start getting a little cluttered. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put a couple extra angles in here. Sorry, I'm trying to get straight lines here, whoops. Okay, so let's make a couple observations. So first off, this is 90 degrees, so that's part of my angle. We knew that this angle was 75 degrees, that's our new bearing. We know that this entire angle has to add up to 90 degrees. Well, we've already gone 75 of it, which means this must be 15 degrees, okay? So if we look at the triangle now on the left, we know that this is 90 degrees. We've already got 30 degrees, so it means this angle must be 60 degrees. And again, this angle makes a right angle, so we know that this missing angle must be 30 degrees. Let me write that a little bit bigger. So that's gotta be 30 degrees. So now I can simply add up those values, right? So I've got 15 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 30 degrees, and that's gonna equal 135 degrees. 
So we're just going to use cosine of 135 degrees. So this is just calculator stuff. Um, I squared it and then took the, you know, I did all the, the computations on the right, took the square root of both sides, and I got the D is roughly equal to 41.6 kilometers. So that's going to be our solution for the first part of the question. So that one's not too terrible, I think. Again, we're just using the, the law of cosines. We again we just have to figure out we just have to figure out this this missing angle first. But again, we're just using the fact that we've got a lot of right angles that we can that we can uh, use to our advantage. Okay, so the next thing that we want to figure out, okay, so again, we want to figure out, and again, I understood it to mean if we're at the point C. What bearing would we have to go on to get back to the point A? So we need to find this, uh, this bearing. That's the one that we're looking for. So, okay, so again, I can make an observation, right? If we went all the way to the bottom, well, if we've gone halfway around, that would be 180 degrees. So I just need to figure out the, uh, this missing angle here. That's what I'm trying to figure out now, and that would be my, my bearing. So let's see here. Um, we can use the law of sines. So I've got that. So if we call this our angle, I call this the angle capital C. So we would have the sine of capital C. I look at the uh, distance opposite that side. The distance opposite that, that side is going to be 20 kilometers. And we can now use, um, we can use the angle we just found, sine of 135 degrees, and we can take the side opposite that, which we just found to be 41.6 degrees. So, okay, so, and the reason why I want to figure out the angle C, again, if I make another triangle here, Right, again, we've gone 75 degrees here. So that angle is 75 degrees. We know that all the angles inside have to add up to 190 degrees. So this angle is going to be 15 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 15 degrees, I'm going to figure out whatever angle C is, and I'm going to subtract that away from 90 degrees to give us the little missing red angle. So quite a little, quite a few things going on here. Okay, so we can multiply both sides of this by 20. We'll take sine of 135 degrees divided by 41.6. Well, we would have to take the inverse sine of both sides to solve for C. So I'm getting C to be roughly equal to, I got it to be 19.87 degrees. So now I can take my... Let me bust out my calculator here. I should just probably do this one in my head. Sorry. Okay. So we know that this missing angle, it's going to be 90 degrees. So I'm looking at this angle total. That's 90 degrees. So it's going to be 90 degrees minus the 15 degrees minus what we just found, which is 19.87 degrees. So I'm getting this to be, so let's see, 90 minus 15, 90 minus 15 minus 19.87. I'm getting that to be roughly equal to So what should we call this missing angle? Um, so this angle in red, well, let's, let's not even, do we even need to label it? I don't think so. So that missing angle in red, that's going to be 55.13 degrees. So now I know that the bearing is going to be the 180 degrees, because that's halfway around, plus this missing part that we just found. which is 55.13 degrees. And so 180 
plus 55.13, right? That's just going to be roughly equal to 235.13 degrees. So again, I hope I'm understanding that question correctly. You know, how you would need to travel to get from C back to A. That's how I'm understanding it, at least. Um, you could always find, if you needed to find the bearing from the point um, from the point A to get to point directly to point C, maybe you you know instead of doing this change of course from going from A up to this point B, and then going to point C, maybe you just wanted to be on a bearing that took you straight directly from A to C. That would be easy to do now because again we we've uh, we know the value of this angle. We've got information about opposite sides, so you could easily use the law of sines on that to get our angle down here. We could call that angle A. And once you use the law of sines to find that angle, you would just add the 30 degrees to get uh, to get this total this total bearing. So um, if you're interested, certainly feel free to try that one. But that's how you would go about it. We've definitely got enough information uh, in this case. And again, I feel like there's probably easier ways to do this. I definitely did this one in a couple different ways. So this isn't the only way, but it is a way that works.